Okay guys, I'm back and I want to talk about this bar graph. As you can see, um, this shows reports of myocarditis and pericarditis. You can see that when the COVID shots got introduced, the cases skyrocketed through the roof. The source came from openbears.com. Um, so like I've said before, if you want the raw data to bears you can go on the cdc website and just type in bears and you can look at the raw data i like to use uh, the database called um, medalerts.org it's a little bit more user friendly okay um so i showed a friend uh, this bar graph and she wasn't able to really wrap her mind around the significance of this so i'm going to attempt attempt to bring a little bit more um, clarity um, to, the, to what's going on. So to start off, uh, VAERS is the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, V-A-E-R-S, VAERS. Um, our government has several vaccine surveillance systems. VAERS is the only system that you and I can look at, so that's why I discussed that system. There were other systems. Uh, that you were able to FOIA and get the information, but uh, the government stopped that for whatever reason. They don't want the public to be able to retrieve um, information. So VAERS is what we have. Uh, what are some of the issues to VAERS? VAERS is a passive, um, passive reporting system, meaning anyone can report to VAERS. Typically, doctors are the ones that report vaccine injuries and deaths to, to the VAERS system, but your mother can report, your father can report, your friend can report, you can report, okay? Um, so that's an issue, right? It's a passive surveillance system. Anyone can report. Now, um, and people will criticize, well, anybody can report a case to VAERS, so we can't trust that. Our government uses that system. The government trusts the system. Um, they implement it as our surveillance system, and they tell the public, this is what we're using, don't worry. So um, what's my response to anybody can report to VAERS? One, um, it's a federal crime to lie on a VAERS report to start, okay? So I don't know how many people are willing to risk prison to lie on a VAERS report. Um, two is it's kind of difficult to fill out a VAERS report. It takes about 45 minutes to fill out a report, and it's quite irritating to fill it out. You have to have a fair amount of information. You need um, the doctor who gave you the shot, the location, the phone number, the vaccine, the lot number to the vaccine. Um, so you need a lot of information for that, okay? Um, and then what's supposed to happen is, let's say there was a lot of deaths that got reported with a particular vaccine, probably those in the CDC, because VAERS is CDC driven from my understanding. Um, they're supposed to just look, you know, investigate to see are the two connected, right? So uh, what are some of the other issues with VAERS? It's vastly underreported, okay? Um, I agree with this. It is vastly underreported. Um, our government, here we go, um, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services set out to find, you know, just how underreported it is. And um, so the results were that less than 1% of people report their adverse events. Um, specifically, it says, likewise, fewer than 1% of vaccine adverse events are reported. Low reporting rates preclude or slow the identification of problem drugs and vaccines that endanger public health. And I will show you this. So there's that. You can pause it, take a screenshot, write it down, do whatever you need to do if you want to look this up yourself. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not that long. It's not that difficult to read. So, um, okay, so just a little bit of background information to that. So what I've done here, I've tried to kind of recreate the best I could um, this graph. 
and try to fill in some of the information um, for those of you out there. So, you know, people look at this and they're not, they're not sure what the significance is, right? So I'm gonna try to just do the best I can with the information that I was able to find. So to start off, I was able to find out that at the end of 2020 through 2022, there was approximately 670 million shots given out, okay? As you recall, a lot of like Pfizer, Moderna, it was a series of two, and then you had two boosters, regular boosters, and then you had a bivalent booster. So some people out there have gotten a total of five shots, okay? So there's 600, approximately 670 million shots that was given out from the end of uh, 2020 through 2022 was what this data represents. So I'm just going to kind of show you a rough calculation to help you wrap your mind around how many potential cases of myocarditis and pericarditis are out there. Now remember, um, the data is in VAERS, they're not saying this is causal, but what it is, is it's a massive signal and our people, government officials, the authorities are supposed to be investigating this to see is it causal, right? Because we went from, I don't know, maybe 100 cases of myocarditis and pericarditis before the shots came on the scene and then now we're up to 30,000 reports. So that's a massive signal. So for the sake of kind of following along with this thought experiment, let's say that we've got 30,000 cases that are legitimate, okay? So what I've done here is, if you can follow along, so here it was about approximately 30,000 in 2021 and about 27,000 in 2022. So I added the two together and then we have uh, 57,000 cases of myocarditis and pericarditis reported in this span, okay? So that's what I did. I just added the two together. So then I said, if we have 57,000 cases and that me, and we've got, according to the report, that's less than 1% of report. So if 57,000 is 1%, how many cases of myocarditis and pericarditis would be occurring if 100% of people reported their, um, their injuries? So it would be 5,700,000 cases of myocarditis and pericarditis. So you can say uh, we've got 5,700,000 cases of myocarditis and pericarditis to approximately 670 million cases, uh, 70 million shots um, that was given out minus 100, right? Because if I say, well, it's probably about 100 attributed to all the other vaccines, so minus 100. So you could kind of say, well, it's a possibility that there is around... Five million six hundred thousand cases of myocarditis and pericarditis that have occurred between the end of 2020 through 2022. That's a lot of cases of myocarditis and pericarditis, okay? That's huge. To me, this is significant, okay? Now, of course, like I said, this is just a, a thought experiment. We, we, can't, we can't do science this way, right? It needs to be investigated, right? It, we need to see what's going on. So for me, understanding kind of the issues with VAERS, um, I'm not gonna wait until the authorities come out with their answer, right? I'm My neighbor's telling me she's got issues. Another neighbor's telling me they've got issues. Family members telling me they've got issues. Friends telling me they've got issues. 
I'm somebody who I'm going to take in all of the information and then, you know, come up with my own decision. I'm not somebody who's going to wait for the authorities to tell me when there's a problem, right? I'm not going to wait for pharma to come out and tell me when the, that there's a problem. Uh, need I remind you of thalidomide? It took five years for them to acknowledge that there was a correlation, okay, that the two was actually connected. Now, the women knew well before, okay, the people knew well before. So, you know, I'm the kind of person that I'm not going to wait 5, 10, 20, 30 years for government or pharma to report back to me on what's going on, okay? You can decide. You can make up your own mind. All right. Having said that, let me move forward with shedding some more light on this information, okay? So, how many vaccines was given out beforehand, all right? What I've done is I've written down all the vaccines on the CDC childhood schedule, okay? So we have hepatitis B, rotavirus, DTaP, Hib, pneumococcal, polio, flu, MMR, chickenpox, which is varicella, Hep A, Tdap, HPV, meningococcal, there was some other sort of meningococcal on the list, uh, pneumococcal, and dengue, okay? Um, DTaP, there's a series of five, pneumococcal, there's a series of four, I put 18 for the flu um, shot because they get, a, they're supposed to get a flu shot every year, right? So that's the CDC schedule. You can go on um, the CDC website and look up CDC um, childhood vaccine schedule and you can see the details, okay? They go into more details of who gets shots for what and how many and so forth, okay? So this is for under 18. It's about 58 shots um, that you would get if you followed the CDC schedule. It winds up being 72 doses. So how many people are going along with the CDC schedule? It's a fair amount. And one of the reasons why it's so many people that are um, compliant with the CDC childhood vaccine schedule is because doctors really educate the parents on getting the vaccines. Um, I can say doctors, they there's a financial incentive um, if they can get a certain percentage of their patients um, vaccinated according to the CDC schedule. So let's say you had 100 people in the practice. If that doctor can get a certain percentage of their practice of the children in their practice, um, compliant with the vaccine schedule, that doctor makes a good chunk of money, okay? If you're somebody who wants to spread out the shots, like sometimes when these um, parents bring their children in, the doctor wants to give them four shots, four different shots, one here, one here, one on the leg, one on the other leg. Sometimes parents say, wait a minute, if my child has some sort of an allergic reaction, I won't know which one did it, right? So sometimes parents will want to do one shot at a time. That way, if the child has seizures right after DTaP shot, um, then they will know and they'll say, wait a minute, I don't want to do the DTaP shot anymore because my child has seizures, but I want to continue with the other ones, okay? But this can be a problem for the doctors because if you spread them out and you're not following that CDC schedule, you're cutting into their profit margin, right? Um, especially, we, I'm seeing that um, some parents, they don't want to vaccinate at all, right? They've read the package insert and they say, whoa, I don't like that the safety study was only four days. I don't like that the safety study was only five days. I don't like that they didn't use a true placebo. They used an, another vaccine as the placebo, right? I don't like how they did that study. For whatever reason, maybe they prayed to God and God told them not to vaccinate their child. They This person thought the child's immune system was fine. They rather 
go a different route. For whatever reason, sometimes parents are saying no. And this is a problem for the doctors, the pediatricians, because it cuts into their profit margin. So they will kick out those um, parents and children out of their practice. Okay, this is what's happening. So, um, so when I say that a lot of people are up to, their children are up to date on these vaccines, they are because there's a lot of education from the doctor to say you need to, you really need to you know get this shot because of x y and z okay so so take that into consideration um i also want to just say a caveat uh, just recently the um cdc added covid19 uh, vaccine to the childhood schedule I find this to be a major problem, um, but that can be a different video. So I didn't add the COVID-19 shot to the schedule, but it's it's now here. Okay, so lots of vaccines given out every year is what is what I'm driving at. So then when the child goes to college, they're getting more shots. Now, why on earth would they get more shots if if what I'm saying is correct? Oh. Not to mention these children under 18, when they go to school, the parents are being told you've got to vaccinate all, you know, there's all these school vaccines. You've got to get those, right? Otherwise your child can't go to school. That is not the truth. Um, we in the United States have exemptions to vaccines, okay? It varies from state to state. But um, you have religious exemptions, so if it is your sincerely held religious belief not to get vaccines, you can say no. Um, we have philosophical exemptions in some state, and then on all the states we have a medical exemption. Now in states like California, West Virginia, uh, Mississippi, I think there's about five or six states. I used to know them offhand, but... Anyhow, um, they've removed religious exemption off the table. And all these people are left with is medical exemption. And I have seen where a child gets, um, for example, a DPT shot and has an allergic reaction. And then the parent says, hey, I don't want my child to get any more shots. And the doctor says, no, no, your child just had an allergic reaction to DPT or DTAP. Sorry, DPT is older. DTAP. Um, but no, you still need to get MMR, chicken pox, hep A, and so, so forth and so on, um, because in order to go to school, um, because your child just got damaged from DTAP, it, it, you know, but so then your child gets damaged from DTAP and then your child gets damaged from hepatitis A. Okay. You can, you, you can have a free pass from those, but you still have, you see where I'm going with this. It's a problem, right? Um, in California, they've removed religious exemption. They're only left with medical exemption. And the doctors are getting investigated if they write a medical exemption for the parents. So the state of California, those children are highly vaccinated, okay? So we've got a lot of vaccines that are given every year, every year, okay? So back to college. You'll say, well, why do they need to get more shots in college? We just went over they already got a ton of vaccines and i can tell you at the college i went to what was happening was the first semester you can get in you don't need to have proof of vaccination the second semester they tell you you've got to have your vaccine records and a lot of these students can't locate their records their parents can't locate them they can't get a hold of the doctors and so the school tells them well, you've got to get revaccinated. Don't worry. It's not a problem to get all these shots all over again. So these kids are getting revaccinated over and over, okay? Um, they don't know that there are ways to say no to these, um, to these shots. All right. Next, we've got adult boosters. Now, a lot of people are not aware that the CDC has an adult vaccine schedule. Okay, 
I know people who love vaccines, absolutely love, 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 love them. And I say, oh, so are you following the adult vaccine schedule that the CDC has? And they say, what are you talking about? And I said, well, you need to get your, I'll pull up, you know, the, the chart and I'll say, well, you need to get your MMR. You need a pneumococcal. You need a, um, what's the vaccine for uh, shingles? A shingr shingrix, shingles vaccine. Um, I think it's called like Shingrix or something. Anyhow, um, so no, they're not getting their adult vaccines per um, the CDC adult schedule. Maybe some people, they'll, they'll have their, their Tdap boosters, but that's about it. All right, military shots. Now, I've spoken to many people in the military, many guys in the military, and I say, how many shots are you guys getting? And the way that these guys describe it to me, they say they, they're just put in this line and they just walk down and the somebody just injects them, chink, 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 and they get loads of them, right? And I just couldn't wrap my mind around this. And they think that it's normal, that it's totally normal to be getting this stuff all of the time, right? Vaccines are not a nutrient. Okay, this has toxic substances inside of it. So I asked somebody in the military, I won't say who, um, and I said, about how many shots are y'all getting in, in the span, you know, that you're in the military? And he said he thinks it's on average 147 shots that are given. I found this number to be extraordinary. So I then got a list of um, standing orders from from what I'm told anyhow uh, for the Navy and there's 18 vaccines that are that are kind of a given and then it possibly after that they can be given smallpox vaccine which that's a very reactive vaccine. Um, there's a vaccine for plague which I didn't know about. Um, then there's a dengue vaccine we that's on the childhood schedule. There's a, a note with that if you look on the childhood schedule for CDC. Um, and then cholera. So that's a lot. Even anthrax on here seem to be standard. That's a very reactive shot. Anyhow, so my point is they're getting lots of shots every year. Okay, so lots and lots of shots. So now it would be nice to know how many people in the United States are getting an MMR shot. How many people in the United States are getting a DTaP shot? Because then we could look at how many reports of seizures, uh, heart attacks, transverse myelitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, Bell's palsy, so forth on the VAERS. And then you can kind of see the rate of reported injuries to the rate of total vaccines that's given. That would be nice. If anyone out there has that data, I'd be open to it, right? Send it to me. But all I can say is that I know that we are, we're giving out vaccines like Tic Tacs, okay, every year. Now, when it comes to the flu shot, I was able to find um, better data. Uh, the CDC says that between 50 and 60 percent of the U.S. population gets a flu shot every year. Okay, so that's why a lot of people are comparing uh, the flu shot stuff to um, COVID-19. Okay, to the COVID-19 shots because approximately half of the U.S. is getting that. So what I did was I just put together, remember, I'm trying to kind of recreate this that we started off with. And so we've got starting in 2010, between 50 and 60% of people getting their flu shots. In 2009, I know it was much higher. There was this big scare of H1N1 flu. Uh, you were supposed to get your regular flu shot that year, and then you were supposed to get a special H1N1 uh, flu shot that year. And so I'm sure, and there was a lot of 
propaganda, you know, go out and go get your flu shot and so on. Um, so I imagine in that year, maybe it was closer to 60% or 70%. I really can't say. I didn't pull that data. So at any rate, you can see approximately 50 to 60% of people got their flu shots. In 2020, we've got 60% or higher um, that got a flu shot in 2020, um, probably because of, you know, the fear campaigns that was going on behind um, COVID-19. So the point is you can really, after showing just how many vaccines are given every year, you know, loads and loads and loads of vaccines, 55% people getting back flu, just the flu vaccine for 2019. And then you add all these other flu shots and um, all these other childhood shots, college shots. We've got even a few people, parents, the 10 people in the U.S. that <laughs> get their adult boosters. Um, so you add all of these other shots on the same year and still, look, we barely have any cases of myocarditis and pericarditis um, in, in the previous years. And all we did here was just add the COVID-19 shots and look at what is happening here. So um, people might say, you know, well, there's 670 million um, shots given out and apparently 5 million, 700,000, you know, um, approximately possible, possible, you know, um, cases of myocarditis. Certainly you can say 30,000 in this year was reported, 27,000 in this year reported. That's just the collateral damage. That's just the accepted collateral damage, right? Is that what we're doing here? You know, because I would like to know if we are, you know, there's seizures happening from shots, Bell's palsy that's happening from shots, transverse myelitis. Um, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Permanent nerve damage that's happening from shots, death that happens from shots, what is the accepted collateral damage for you, right? I feel, in my opinion, where there is risk, there should be choice. I don't know what you believe. All right, so I hope that helped. Oh, one last thing I will show you. So on, on um, medalerts.org, you can look up different shots. Recently, just I kind of just poked around and looked at the booster for COVID-19 to see what are people reporting and there's a lot on there so you can read each case and um uh, one thing that i saw that was popping up was delirium delirium seemed to be a theme in there so um then i went ahead and just printed out a list of all the these vaccines that you can report on right so if you were to go on uh, med alerts you can just click on these different shots and see what the injury rate is for, you know, death, the uh, hospitalization. I mean, you can pick, right? Like you can kind of decide what you want to see. So look at all the pages, all these different vaccines. I mean, pages and pages and pages, right? And you can see how, how big I've printed it out. Um, and so it's just page after page. So saying we've got all this and look how little amount. And again, it's all this plus, and all we did this year was add the COVID-19 shot and just look at this. So as much as I would like to have all of the data to say how many shots were given out in the U.S. for DTaP and how many cases of, um, I don't know, heart attacks happened from it or brain damage that happened from it. Um, I, I don't have that information. I know that I feel strongly that the government does have that information. Uh, they use systems like the Vaccine Safety Data Link. And so they have a decent idea because we are tracking vaccines and they're tracking 
uh, injuries in government systems, but they just won't let us see it. Why? Why the lack of transparency? Anyway, so I hope that helps. Um, you guys can make up your own decision. I don't know about you, but I'm not waiting for the government and pharma to tell me when a product is dangerous. I'm hearing enough on my own to make a decision for me, but you have to do what's right for you. Um, so if you like these videos, give a thumbs up, um, subscribe, and comment, leave a comment. This helps grow YouTube channels. Um, also, if there's a video that you're interested in me doing, then put it below in the comments. Um, and maybe it's something that I can tackle next, okay? So I know this was a lot of information today, but I thought it was important to cover it. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks, guys. Bye.